Clarissa, thank you so much. I am so honored to chat with you today. But to, okay. to get started, can you just share with us a bit about your journey as being an international supermodel, an author, <laughs> an actress? Like I said before, I am just so excited to hear more about your story because I feel like you have lived so many lives already. Well, I have, quite frankly. <laughs> I've lived. I think I'm a very old soul. And, uh, and again, as I said before, I've been on the planet a very long time. So I get to do a whole bunch of things when I reach this age. So, um, but thank you so much for that lovely introduction. I um, just, you know, knew uh, from a very early age that I wanted to be on the stage and I wanted to be in front of a microphone. And so at kindergarten, I was uh, Mary Poppins in the kindergarten play and uh, singing loudly and proudly. And um, and then it didn't, it sort of didn't do anything for quite some amount of years. Um, I went into New York City when I was 20. 20 and I wanted to be modeling so I started to do uh, modeling around the world which was very exciting <laughs> but my role models were really again you know I didn't have internet or computers in the day we only had three television ch channels in the years I'm talking of but we had you know lovely movies that I would love to watch like Ava Gardner and Rita Hayworth the the all the beautiful women from the you know the, the four the movies of the 30s 40s and 50s and more the 40s and 50s, really, but they were just beautiful women that I looked up to and I wanted to be just like them. So I knew at an early age I wanted to model. And the only way we could really have any reference for us was the Sears catalog. And it would come out two times a year. We would get a, a, a you know, a Sears is a, a big, was a big store here in the United States. And they would come out with big, thick catalogs twice a year. And then there was one little woman section in there, you know. So I'd go and I'd take a look at the women and the clothing and the makeup and the hair and the way they were posing. And that was my reference. It wasn't very much, really. Um, as I moved through the 70s and then into, into the 70s, I, you know, we had magazines. And so those were more of a reference for me. By 1980, I had moved into New York City and I was really ready to, uh, to model. I tried and it worked out. And then I found myself in Paris and in, and in Italy where I stayed to live for about 28 years. And that's really how it all got started for me. Again, very difficult times there were, you know, it wasn't always super easy, but it was tenacity. I think one of the most important things that I can leave the audience with is tenacity uh, and really never giving up. Um, that is one of the most important things it's, and, and more, one of the most difficult things because giving up is so much easier than saying, no, no, I'm going to put on my big girl britches and I'm going to get up again tomorrow. I'm going to try it against all odds because this is my heart. It's in my passion. And I know it's on my path. So um, lots of times we have to um, continually believe in ourselves when it seems to be the most difficult thing to do. Yeah, yeah, th that is so true. And I love that you speak about that in your book, which we'll get to. And can I just say that w someone that has achieved so much as yourself and being, you know, front and center of, of so many like public things, understanding that you wrote a book about self-esteem was, mm -hmm. was quite surprising because one thing that just comes natural. So did self-esteem just come natural to you? Well, no, not at all. One of the reasons I wrote about self-esteem is there's a very, there's a, there's a prominent saying that says something like this usually we teach what we need to learn hmm. and so certainly along the way you know i've had uh my bouts we all do we're human beings and we all have to live this thing called life and life will will come at you and it will trigger you. It'll be a difficult, it's a beautiful place to be, but can be very difficult at times. Um, and so coming from, you know, a lot of people don't necessarily come from uh, a familial background that is always of the happiest and the healthiest, right? We don't get to choose our parents. And I'm here predominantly for those people who really didn't believe in themselves because of what they were taught at home. Uh, so that's something that's very, very you know near and dear to my heart. But let's take it even broader. So we've got everything that they teach us from the familial tribe. Then we've got um, our friends. So we we learn and garner things from them. Our faith, uh, our educative systems and processes and institutions. Now we've got social media. We've got the news. And we have to take all of that and sort of put it into its proper place and space for us in our uh, life's uh, uh, journey and our existence, our reality. So we have to sort of weed out you know, what works for us, what doesn't work for us, what is truth and what is not. And we see that from the news. We see that from social media. So these, I think, are a little even more trying times. Again, I today would not want to be a parent and I wouldn't want to be a child 
because these, I think, are some of the most difficult times to navigate ever, to understand what real is, what reality is, and what we should be aspiring to. There seem to be very few real, true heroes or heroines for us to look up. Even the ones that we thought we could look up to were the ones that we find later on. Mm, that one went to jail. Mm one's being suspicious about you know so there's you know when we even when we think that we're looking at people that we can look up to mm. um you know, somewhere down the line in many cases we find out even that's not true these things can be devastating and extremely disappointing so this is why i advocate for turning in and taking a look at self and trusting self and loving self and the self esteem regime does that this is a that that I have been wanting to write for a very long time. I am thrilled, Insaf, to tell you that it is now on its third award. It is wow. in Barnes & Noble, so the only bookstore that we have in the United States after a year and a half. It's still in the bookstores. And it's an international uh, worldwide bookseller as well, a uh, 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 selling book as well. So extremely proud of the book. But I advocate for all of us to constantly want to be a better person tomorrow than we are today and we can do that on a daily basis when we commit to personal development, uh, sorry, personal development, uh, self-esteem and self-improvement. Yeah, you, your book, The Self-Esteem Regime, can I just say it is such an easy read. Yeah. I've never, you know, like read a book that was so easy. And and you, you start at the beginning to say that you were writing this for yourself. and. Yeah. And and the way it, it's written, you, you proceed to say that. And as you're going through the process, you are actually writing it for me. And as I'm reading, I'm like, is she in my head? <laughs> yeah. So let me just do that passage for you a moment, because I think it's really powerful. And I write this in the acknowledgments. So just bear with me a second. I'd like to acknowledge the millions of people all over the world who have been abandoned, abused, beaten, hit, struck, oppressed, depressed, distressed, held back, lied to, cheated on, lost, betrayed, deceived, misled, double-crossed, walked out on, stabbed in the back, sold down the river, stolen from, deserted, discarded, shunned, cast out, dropped, dumped, forgotten, neglected, rejected, and or dejected. You are the sole reason I have written this book. Well, what I think everybody, at least one of those things they can say, yeah, that happened to me and it really yeah. hurt. It was really painful and I didn't understand it and I didn't know how to navigate it. And I thought it was about me. So many times in our lives, we think that that what's happening to us is about us. And many of the things are being projected onto us. Again, getting back to clearing away all the muck, all the gunk, all the cobwebs and being able to be really locked and loaded and clear and concise about who we are, what our value systems are, and where we're going in life, how we're going to get there. Mm -hmm. Value systems are another really huge thing that I talk about. I talk about taking the high road. And the high road is this. It's living in honesty, integrity, gratitude, and honor. And if we can come to the table every day of our lives with our um version of what our value system is, I guarantee you that we will be living a much a much more peaceful and uh, coherent, cohesive experience with ourselves and also with others. Um, you know, the value system, if I were to say to you, you know, drop and give me five, what do you, you know, what's your value system? What do you, you know, believe in? Some people are going to have a hard time really coming up with that, you know, and saying, gosh, I don't even know what values are. Let me think, you know, so be really clear, get your value system in place, find out what your values are. Mine is honesty. And it is, it is radical honesty with myself and with others. And I am open to suggestions because I'm a work in progress. I am imperfect. And, uh, you know, through life experiences, uh, you know, I still am learning about what, you know, what, what, how I can be even more honest on every given day, right? Um, you know, you're only as good as your word. The word that you, you know, that you give to others is, is probably one of the most important things apart from your love is the, is your word. Integrity, your moral principles, right? It's your moral uh, standing, uh, and what you you know believe is right or wrong, you know what is good mm -hmm. and bad behavior. It's your moral compass. It's it guides your actions. Gratitude, 
We all know what that is. And if you can't come up with at least five right off the top, top of your head, please go back to the drawing board quickly and write down things you know you need to be thankful for. And then honor. Honor is, you know, who are you when no one else is in the room? You know, who are you when no one else is looking? Mm -hmm. um, how do you treat how do you treat strangers, for example? How do you treat the people that you know can do nothing for you? Mm -hmm. um, how are you even just dishonoring yourself? And why are you still in a toxic relationship? What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? What are you waiting to change? Are you willing to wait forever? You know, so there are lots of different things that go along with your honor system that I invite everyone to get extremely clear about if you want to be living in happy, healthy self-esteem. That is that is so great. And you know the way we're starting with this podcast is the way exactly how your book is there isn't like this lengthy thing that one has to read before you get the value yeah. it's it's immediately there and yeah. I mean me reading your reading your book before meeting you it just it's you know a perfect translation into this is who you were in the book and this is who you are as well which just Thank goes you. to to exactly how you described yourself well remembering that a regime is an organized way of doing things Things. And thank you for pointing out that this, you're not going to read about self-esteem here. That this is not a read. This is a resource. Mm -hmm. I call it a manual because for me, self-esteem is this manual, but it's a mission and it's a movement. And I will be happy when I, when I see the entire world, right. Living in, in, you know, as living as esteemed beings, can you imagine what kind of world we would be living in if everyone did that? If they came, you know, every day with a, a strong boundaries, again, boundaries is a huge part of self-esteem. Again, so uh, boundaries are uh, nothing more than teaching someone how you will and will not be treated. It's where your line is drawn in the sand, mm. right? So you can do that with ease and joy and glory and happiness. It doesn't have to be an angry exercise at all. It just has to be you saying to someone with a kind voice and a kind tone, hey, listen, you know, that word you just said it really kind of hurt. And let me explain why. Most people are going to say, gosh, I'm so sorry. I had no idea. I'll never do it again. If somebody says to you, oh, come on, get over yourself. You're exaggerating. You might be in a toxic relationship and you might want to, you know, sort of reevaluate that relationship in your life and yeah. I like the way that you explained it because people usually when you when you hear the term boundaries it's it's so heavy and it's like I need to cut people out of my life or I need to just say no to everything but you you just explained the concept so good all right remembering that yes is a full sentence and no is a full sentence so you know when somebody is asking you to do something you don't feel comfortable doing it's okay it's really really actually uh I suggest highly you yeah. say no no I can't or no thank you or no it doesn't resonate or no it's not it's not something I can do in good conscience or you know whatever it may be you don't even have to explain sometimes just no is the full sentence it's all you need and once yes. you know once you know your values once you are aware of what your values are then saying yes and saying no you can do it much more confidently because you know it aligns to your values or not. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. About this in stuff. I'm so passionate about this, you know. I mean, uh, I think you also have to be very careful. You know, people say, um, you know, self-esteem 101, never compare yourself to anyone else. Well, that is very true. Never do. And there are many reasons why we shouldn't do that. Um, you know, uh, you want to compare uh, yourself to somebody else. You say, oh, the grass is always greener on the other side, unless it's AstroTurf, you know, unless it's it's fake because we're we're projecting that some the Joneses have it better than we do, right? And then the grass is always greener on the other side until you get over there and find out that the grass is fake, right? And so that is something we need to be extremely mindful of. The perception of what we're seeing now on social media and then being very careful we can go down the path of our teenagers and how much difficulty and danger they potentially are in for many different reasons. Social media is the perception of what we are wanting to believe is true. So maybe we need to be, comp be comparing ourselves instead to the person we were yesterday. Mm. Just worry about that. As I said before, I want to be a better person tomorrow than I was today. And they could be very teeny little increments. It doesn't have to be big, broad strokes. So I make it up as I go. An extra glass of water for our health, an extra act of kindness towards someone. You know, it can be many different things 
to make us a better person than we are tomorrow than we are. It's a book that we may read, a new acquaintance that we may make, uh, something good that we're putting, some good energy that we put in, out into the world, whatever it is. It could be sometimes I'll go into the supermarket, or whatever, and I'll see a lady. Oh, I love that top. That is so cute. You know, silly stuff, easy stuff. It doesn't take much. Right. So, uh, you know, we also have to understand when we come to self-awareness is it's the realization that there's, there is no opponent. It's you versus you. That's it. Don't worry about everybody else. You know, don't worry about everybody else. Just worry about yourself. Right. Yeah. And, and just on that, just like focusing on yourself and usually we, when we start comparing ourselves and then we feel like we have to be in such a rush to achieve everything that basically everything we ever wanted to achieve, like we need to do it now because yeah. we, we're comparing to social media or um, what we see on, on TV that, like you said, might be fake. And how, with all the accomplishments that you have achieved, do you feel that it was a rush how do you live your life? Is, was it a rush before, um, or or were you just going with you know what your no, goals? No, I really were? was never in a. I was never in a rush to do anything because what I did and what I don't do anymore is I used to live a lot in fear. Um, and fear was something that would grip me, um, and it would take me longer to do things than most because of that fear. And um, remember, fear. We can use a million acronyms, but it's you know face everything and rise, you know, or just face your fears, just do it anyway, because tomorrow is not guaranteed. That's the one thing I can promise you. And that change is the only thing that is that you can, you can rely on, you can rely on change, you can depend on change, and you make sure, you know, we'll always know that change is the only constant. So, you know, what are we really waiting for, for our dreams to come true? If not you, who, first off, if not you, if you sit back and you say, well, who am I to write a book about self-esteem? If I go into Barnes and Noble, there are another thousand of these books. Who am I to write a book? Well, if not me, who? Why? Because my voice is going to be different. My message is going to be different. My tone is going to be different. My uh, my um, uh, end user is going to be different. And, and so, yes, if not you, who? So tomorrow isn't promised, everybody. I mean, I'm not saying, you know, be in a super rush. But I am saying don't waste time either. There's a there's a lovely saying that I that I love. And it's four things in life that you cannot get back. And that's this a word after it is said, an opportunity after it is missed, time after it's gone, and trust after it's lost. Wow. So here's another thing I'll leave, I'll, you know, I like to, to leave as a, as a thought because I love to, you know, to really to invoke thoughts and the thought processes. And that is you have three choices in life. You can give up, you can give in, or you can give it all you've got. And so by eliminating fear, giving it all you've got, and knowing that failure may be one of your greatest allies, because failure is nothing more than your first attempt in learning, yes. first attempt in learning. So embrace it. It's going to happen. Yahoo, little celebration along the way. Next, you know, what am I not going to do now? Because I know I've learned that lesson to get me closer to the success point, closer to where I want to be, closer to where I uh, I, um, I aspire to be. It's another funny thing you've heard, abracadabra, many times, right? Abracadabra. Well, I've just recently learned that abracadabra means I create as I speak. As I speak, the words coming out of my mouth are my creation. I am creating when I say to the universe, I'm I'm such a failure. Okay. The universe believes you. And so does your subconscious, by the way. And when you say I'm unstoppable, I love myself. I am kind and I am good and I am strong and I am bold and I am beautiful and I am powerful. Well, guess what? The universe hears it. And so does your subconscious. There's another abracadabra. abracadabra. I create as I speak. We often hear people say, I am enough. I am enough. We are enough. You are enough. Insuff. This drives me crazy. Because if you look up the dis- definition of enough, it is only as much as is required. Huh? Only as much as is required. Well, I am so much more than enough. I am so much more than is required. So the new mantra now is, I am so much more than enough. I love that. I love, I that. love that too. Yeah. 
I love that too. And that's, 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 it's a very, very, very powerful way of, of putting out to the universe every day. If you said just that now, my book is full of exercises, affirmations, mirror work, journaling. You will get the, you know, when you get the book, you'll understand that the regime is an organized way of doing things and that we start with release and next we rebuild and then we take responsibility and then we reinvent and there's all kinds of lovely things that we do along the way that will that will uh, trigger you into into your biggest boldest brightest and most beautiful self and when i say beautiful obviously that means inside and out because we work on all aspects of self esteem yeah I highlighted from you from your book and then I screenshotted it on my phone as well. It says you oh, deserve nice. to become happier, healthier and more prosperous. You deserve to be in total control of your destiny. And I just find that that to be so beautiful and just such a good like mantra to read every day when you open up your phone instead of going onto social media. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, you know, going back to the, the most important message here is, is, is to answer your question. No, we don't have to be in a hurry, but I wouldn't squander time either. Mm. Again, again, because we, we are not always guaranteed tomorrow. Again, because you are so much more than enough and everyone should know. So put that mantra into your best work, whatever that may be. And then there's another saying that I like to leave people with, and that is, you can do anything until you can't. You can do anything until you can't, because life will happen. And many unfortunate things do happen. So is there someone that you've had an argument with that you haven't spoken to for a while and you miss? Or is there someone you haven't spoken to for a while and you know you need to pick up the phone and apologize to? You know, apart from saying, I love you, the three most powerful words that you will ever speak apart from potentially I am, okay, I am very uh, most uh, important words you will ever speak, then I love you to either yourself or to others. And that is, I am sorry. There is no blame, there is no shame, and there is no guilt in apologizing ever. Whether you believe you are right or wrong, and it, and that's wh- that is where it, wherein true maturity lies, is saying, I'm sorry, knowing in your mind, you probably think you're right and you might have been right. Yeah. But what price are you paying to be right, to be the right rider? What price do you pay? Because everyone has their own version of whatever happened, of the story, of, of the incident, of whatever happened. So it is extremely important to be able to say, I'm sorry to whomever. And I leave that with people so that they can come. I, immediately, I know, usually someone comes to mind for them. Mother, father, brother, sister, ex-husband, child, friend, anyone. It can be anyone. You need to apologize. A neighbor. There is someone that comes to mind. You go, I'm not, I'd never pick up the phone up. Never. I would never send them any. I'll never send them a card. I'll never. And usually it's because we're afraid we won't get a response back. But what I will promise you is that you have put out the good energy. You've put out good energy in that apology and you will let the universe do with it what it will. Mm, That's all you need to know. That is is so true. And and I think it also just ties into the way that you have lived your life and why you have lived so many lives is because you're not sitting and and dwelling and thinking oh no not me i would never you just taking that that next step and i think that's also your message to to people just take the next step and then the next step after that and the step after that and that's yeah. how your life grows yeah and when i say that i also invite everyone to know that a toxic relationship there are relationships in our lives that are so toxic that they're better off left alone when when the when the cord is cut when that line has been drawn in the sand you know, never ignore the red flags in someone just because you want to see the good in people i'll say that again never ignore the red flags just because you want to see the good in people People will always tell you who they are pretty much from the outset. It's up to you to believe them. It's up to you to accept them into your lives or not. So apology where it's due and then toxic cut when you know that's the only way that will be healthier for your well-being. Hmm. And so, you know, happy, healthy self-esteem is also knowing 
the difference. Can we can we chat about the four pillars for living an esteemed life or should we let everyone go and get the book? Well, it, it, absolutely. I mean, you know, first of all, it, I do want to remind everybody this is, you know, we are not looking for validation outside of ourselves. This is called self esteem. This is not what does everybody else think about me esteem. That is not what this is. <laughs> no, what, what everybody else thinks about you is none of your business. It's not your business what they think about you, right? So don't be looking for validation elsewhere. These This is called self-help, uh, okay? This is a self-help personal development. It's a self-help book. It is not a shelf-help book. Don't buy it. Don't put it on your bedside. Don't put it on the shelf. Don't for, do the work, even if it's just a chapter a week. Because sometimes the work in the book will take a minute. When I ask you in the chapter one, what do you need to release? What is not serving you? What is not working for you? What have you been taught? What do you absolutely believe is etched in stone that's not? That's where you need to start. That may take a minute. That's not going to happen you know, with one sitting. So read it at your own pace. And I will tell you this, when you go back and read it six months from now, when you go back and read it a year from now, you're going to pick up new messages from it that you didn't read the first time because you weren't ready yet. I do that frequently. I'll read something. I'll go back. Oh, I don't remember that being in there. Like, where did that come from? It was there the whole time. You just weren't ready to capture it. Right. So um, I think that is really one of the most important things. Um, and, And then, of course, if you get the message along the way in your lifetime, no matter where you picked it up, that you weren't good enough and that you were not worthy enough, you're going to spend the rest of your life trying to prove that you are. So let's cut to the chase. Let's just know that we are. Let's just do the work. Some people are, oh my God, it's work. Do the effort. I don't care. Just do, <laughs> just read the book. Just do what you can. Make yourself, be a better person more than you are today. Be a forgiving heart. Have your heart open to people. Help people. Do a kind thing. Do the right thing. Um, these are the quickest ways for you to be able to garner uh, self-esteem, you know, when you make someone else feel better about themselves for whatever reason, you know, the silliest thing I said before, I love your top, great haircut. <laughs> You've done a teeny weeny little thing. You threw it out there. It was something that made me feel good to make her feel good, right? Simple stuff. I'm, I'm not making up anything as I go. This is really, really simple stuff. You know, we know the difference of, you know, of low self-esteem uh, and, and high self-esteem. And by the way, people say, Oh, well, do I ever take a test on self-esteem and like I get a hundred and I'm good? No, you don't. You never take a hundred percent test and you pass a test once and you're good for life because life happens and life will continue to trigger you no matter what that is. And as that storm comes through, as here comes a tornado, here comes that hurricane, here comes the hailstorm, here comes something that it's really, you wish you could not have to deal with, but you do. And it comes through. So you've done your best to batten down the hatches and hunker down and do whatever. But you you are so after doing so much personal development work, you have you are standing so strong in your stead. This is a tree analogy, just like a well rooted tree. You're so strong in your stead that when that storm passes through, you might lose a leaf or two, or potentially even a little branch. But you're not going to be uprooted and transported away with the storm. Because the tools that you have in the shed are the ones that have been there uh, you know, that you accrue along the way. The more you read, the more you implement, the more you understand, and the more you educate yourself, the, the better your chances are of being able to go, yeah, that was a pretty brutal storm. And I got a little bit of a cleanup to do out back. You know, the garden's looking pretty, <laughs> pretty raggedy right now. But I've got a rake and I've got a shovel and I've got a hoe and I've got, you know, I've got, you know, my all the things I got a trash can. I've got trash bags. I've got everything I need to get that cleaned up and and in, and in short order. Can you imagine if I had none of that in the shed, what my backyard would still look like today? <laughs> you know, it's an analogy, but I think you get I think you get yes. the point. right? <laughs> 
So it kind of it kind of it, it illustrates with imagery a little bit of yeah you know if, if I had all that in the shed thank God the shed didn't get you know <laughs> blown away in this storm it never does the shed is the one thing that will always be there and releasing you talk about in your book releasing and letting go I love that yeah. I don't think people talk about it often enough yeah yeah I think that you know at a certain point you know when you start to do this work you have to understand that your parents did the best that they could possibly do because a lot of times we want to place the blame there and 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 people are just people and parents are just parents and they don't come with manuals and what they do come with though is generational trauma and they also come with you know their own genetics so you know that, that's deeper and and then than this we can go in this in this um uh interview but let's just talk about generational trauma for a while if we go back to parents and grandparents and great-grandparents and great-great-grandparents we are in some way shape or form we're still being formed by some of that right? Then we're formed by everything that we get once we get here. So genetic, generational, and then oh, life, there's a lot of different things that are that are helping to form us. And at a certain point, we have to learn how to reparent ourselves, right? Mom, dad, thank you very much. Be home for Christmas, see you Thanksgiving dinner, you know, call me, I'll call you like, whatever, all of that is good. We have to, (coughs) excuse me, learn how to forgive everything that is forgivable. Um, and that is pretty much everything that most parents bring to the table. I guess I said before, we don't get to choose our parents and they are imperfect. And some of the things they bring to the table can be pretty brutal, whether it be physical harm, emotional harm, mental, all kinds of different things. Right. So we have to be really um, our own best advocates. And again, being bigger, better, bolder and brighter is saying, I forgive you. I get it. You, you know, you're, you're imperfect as, as am I. And then you just learn how to um, almost honor your parents, if you will, because honor is a weapon. I, I love I love when I talk about honor because it's a weapon that will keep it's going to help to keep their dysfunction from overtaking you. When you honor your parents, it's a weapon. So that way they're the, the, the dysfunctional them that they projected onto you is is not is not going to affect you the way it, that you know, uh, that it might have in the past. Let me put it that way. You know, it's kind of one of those things that keeps your heart from being damaged. And it's also about, it's more about what they believe about themselves that they projected onto you, right? It's not about them. It's about moving you past their dysfunction. Do you understand that? Yeah. So when we start to reparent ourselves, this is how we do it. Books like this, courses, classes. Uh, when I was a young girl, uh, before computers and internet, um, I used to go into the three bookstores that we still had here in the United States. Uh, we only have one of those existing now. It's Barnes and Noble. And I used to go to the self-help section. It was a teeny little section like this and stuff. I mean, there weren't many books back there at all, but I knew where it was and I would live there because it was my solace. It was my, it was my assistance. It was, it was, it was my uh, help to under my, my help to understand anything because my life was seemed so upside upside down at the time it was it gave me some of the reasons to the question my why questions right today personal development if you go into the barnes and noble store here now it is rows and rows and rows and rows and rows on self-help self-improvement personal development and it is a billion dollar industry here i can imagine what it is around the world so by you know, by saying that, I'm I'm really confident that, you know, and again, I say advocate for yourself, forget what your parents did, forget what your ex did, forget all of that, because what you are projecting is what you are, is what you are attracting. So be very, very careful of all of that. And by the way, I learn every day too. So, you know, life is life and it triggers, it triggers us all. Amazing. Thank you. Every Everything that you share, every lesson that you share has a tool in it as well, which is just so yeah. incredible. Thank you yeah, so thanks. much. Do you it's have so well. do you have any like classes in terms of your I book? Can, yes, they're they are launching at the end of the summer. Yeah, I'll let you all know about it. They're launching at the end of the summer. That is amazing. I will drop all your links in the show notes, your Instagram and your yeah. website, and of course the book as well. Well, thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to remind you about this. So it's something that Bob Marley said, and I love this quote. Some people are so poor, all they have is money. That is so true. That is that is so true. Thank you for, for leaving us with, with that quote. 
and all the other inspiration. The, this thank was you. such a great episode. And I think that it definitely is going to help so many people. So thank you so much for coming on the podcast. I appreciate it so much. And yeah, I can't wait to read your book further and also see the classes that are that are up and coming and following your journey as well. Love it. Okay, do the work. Thanks, Insaf. Thank you. Thank you.